I am going to talk about some newer projects to assess reef habitats in Lake Michigan. I'm also going to talk about how these projects are coordinating with each other and with other projects to promote learning and shared methodologies. The uh, small number of people named on this slide are only the people who uh, got together to plan uh, for presenting this work at, at the tech committee meeting and at this meeting. But there's a ton of people involved in this work, too many to, uh, to be able to list them all on this slide. So there has been a lot of great work on reefs in the Great Lakes over the years. Most reef work is focused long-term work on specific reefs, or at least a specific handful of reefs. Most of that work is multi-year work, often many years of work. Um, because that work is so focused and, and so comprehensive, necessarily so, uh, we have very little information on the vast majority of other reefs in the Great Lakes. So we have a lot of information on a handful of reefs, but most we don't have very much at all. Uh, many of them we don't even know um, uh, how big they are or what the general characteristics of them are, including things like substrate. Um, there's also a growing interest in reef restoration in the Great Lakes, which is great. However, there's a mismatch between that interest in reef restoration and our general lack of knowledge of most reefs in the Great Lakes. And that's a, and a, an especially important element is that most of that focused work on reefs is, is on our highest quality reefs so that we can better understand what's going on on, the, on our high quality reefs. But any sort of restoration should be happening more on the degraded reefs, and those would be the ones that we'd be the least likely to have information on. So, um, so we have this need for um, a better understanding of most of our reefs in the Great, Great Lakes. We also have limited time and money for the kind of comprehensive assessments that have been done in the past. So because of this, this need to get broader information on reefs across the Great Lakes, there's a need to adapt the methods that have been developed on these comprehensive assessments to develop more rapid assessment protocols so that we can, can get a much more comprehensive picture of reef condition across all of our reefs. And the kind of things that we need from those are we, we need to be able to map and characterize reefs to identify impacts and threats to those reefs and understand what fish are using them and what sort of production we're getting off of them. Uh, a couple of different project teams in Green Bay and Northeast Lake Michigan recognize this general lack of information for most of our reefs and have launched projects to address it. The Green Bay team includes Fish and Wildlife Service, the Nature Conservancy, Wisconsin DNR, Michigan DNR, and others. And the project team in Northeast Lake Michigan, which is led by Dave Clapp, includes Michigan DNR, the Nature Conservancy, Central Michigan, Central Michigan University, and Pete Esselman's group, who were already doing a lot of important bottomland mapping work, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. But they agreed to join efforts to really elevate the physical habitat mapping work in the Northeast Lake Michigan project. One of the first steps that each project took was to do an initial inventory and develop maps of reefs within the region. This was an important step in order to get a sense of the potential scope of this work and to begin developing project designs. Each project started with the generic layer of reefs in, from GLAF, which is probably the best layer for reefs in the Great Lakes, but it isn't comprehensive. In fact, some of the, some of the, uh, some of the reefs that have been focused on in the past are not reflected in the GLAF layer, but it's still probably the best layer that's out there. Uh, and then to build off of that and to get an idea of how large each feature was, um, the the Goodyear layer, the Goodyear spawning atlas layer was used, which obviously has a lot of information on reefs in it. Uh, navigation charts were used, which, as shown here, you can see uh, um, reefs are in the navigation charts. 
and also the LIDAR data that the Army Corps developed several years ago. Uh, you can identify reefs off of that as well. So all of these were used to, uh, to, to develop a, a more thorough inventory of reefs within each region. And this, this is kind of blown up on the left is a blow up of part of Green Bay and on the right is kind of the outlet of Grand Traverse Bay in Northeast Lake Michigan, showing some of the polygons of some of these features that were created um, based on those layers. And again, this is just, this is just an initial mapping to, to get an idea of, uh, of like what the, you know, how, like how large these reefs are and, and where they're distributed and, and really just to get going on project designs. Each project uh, develops some sort of stratification or zonation uh, independently. So on the left is, uh, is the Green Bay project, uh, split Green Bay, Green Bay up into three zones, a northern, a central, and a southern zone. And uh, Green Bay decided uh, that they are going to try to represent reefs equally uh, as the project advances uh, equally within each of the three zones. On the right is uh, the Northeast Lake Michigan projects. They've identified six different zones. Uh, for that, most of, most of the emphasis will be on the, on the central cluster of zones, the Leland, Grand Traverse Bay, and Little Traverse Bay zones. That will probably receive like kind of the greatest emphasis. But um, the intent is also to make sure uh, some reefs in the southern Michigan and the North Shore as well are, um, are also included um, in the assessments. Both projects have very similar objectives. Uh, the first objective for both projects is related to mapping and physical habitat. Uh, so, for instance, the multi-beam work that Pete Esselman is doing for the Northeast Lake Michigan project um, will characterize a lot of different physical habitat elements. Uh, Dale Hansen from F Fish and Wildlife Service is leading uh, the multi-beam work in Green Bay, but coordinating closely with Pete, trying to make sure everything's calibrated the same so the, those results are directly comparable. Um, there will be... Um, ROV camera or drop, drop camera work uh, to, uh, to ground truth the multi-beam data and to model that out uh, for different habitat features and also for other supplemental measures as well. Um, both projects either are, are doing or will be doing some sort of uh, uh, reef condition measures, including things like invasive species density assessments, things like drysynids or uh, round gobies or rusty crayfish. Uh, Cladophora coverage is also an important element and, and sedimentation as well. Does the reef appear to be having sedimentation issues uh, that could be leading to degradation? And then finally, uh, both projects are or will be having elements of uh, of, of uh, spawning use, like what fish are using it for spawning, and then potentially for other fish community associations as well. And the ultimate goal, I think, for both projects is basically to identify priority areas for restoration or protection, and also to inform future targeted monitoring efforts. So the the uh, both projects pretty early on recognize that they're very complementary to each other and uh, started um, coordinating and sharing information across projects. Another project in Lake Erie, which is uh, uh, being headed up by Justin Shyot and Ed Roseman and Pippa Cohn and others, uh, that was building off of the work that uh, Zach Amadon and Jason Fisher did at University of Toledo, and along with other partners. Um, uh, that project was starting up at about the same time. Um, it was more uh, more focused on the on the spawning element, but but definitely looking at multiple reefs. And it was starting at the same time, and they were interested in some of the other elements being collected uh, in Northeast Lake Michigan and Green Bay. 
So um, that project also uh, began coordination at the same time. But, um, but then the, these, these coordination calls quickly grew. Uh, uh, Brian Waddell from USGS, who's doing very similar work on Lake Ontario and, and also uh, some work on Lake Superior, uh, Brian joined in pretty early on to, uh, to, to share and, and learn from. And then um, uh, several other uh, projects in Lake Michigan also began joining. So Ben Dickinson from, uh, from Indiana DNR has been involved in these calls. Uh, a couple of my colleagues, Lindsay Chatterton and Andrew Tucker, who are, work on the, Lake, the Northeast Lake Michigan project. They contacted Ben to see if Indiana might be interested in doing some similar uh, work on the Indiana reefs, and Ben uh, was interested, so Ben has joined the fold. Um, Rebecca Redman and uh, Hillary Glandon, uh, Rebecca from Illinois DNR and Hillary from the Illinois Natural History Survey, have also been involved in these coordination calls. Uh, we reached out to Rebecca uh, because we knew uh, that the Natural History Survey had done had been doing so much good work on reefs uh, for quite some time, uh, and then we've since learned about the the work that uh, that Hillary is is uh, is leading up on the artificial reef structure that the that the core uh, has put in by Illinois Beach State Park uh, that she's going to be trying to do very similar me measurements. Uh, to these other reef assessment projects. And then uh, Laura Schmidt and Cheryl Masterson uh, with Wisconsin DNR uh, 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 are, have also joined these calls and they're working uh, on getting some funding for some, uh, some reef work in the Southern Refuge, uh, including some substrate mapping and some telemetry work that's very complementary to work that's going on in the other projects as well. So, Big, a broad coordination, uh, learning from each other. The goals of the coordination calls are to share and com compare methods and wherever possible, trying to unify methodology. To the extent that we can, if we can measure the same thing in the same way, that'll give us the opportunity to do broader comparisons uh, over across projects. And that would be, I think everyone agrees, that would be desirable. Uh, and then we just generally want to learn from each other and learn across projects and, and also learn from other efforts as well. We've had other people join talking about past projects. Uh, we've we've uh, formed uh, some working subgroups to, uh, uh, to be able to get more deeper into some of the methodologies, including a physical habitat subgroup, uh, a reef condition subgroup, and then a and then a fish association subgroup. Moving forward, uh, we will be continuing uh, these court these coordination discussions and information sharing. Of course, each individual project will have a variety of results uh, coming out of them. Um, and then within each project and then across projects, we'll have much more comprehensive maps of, of reefs. Uh, uh, and then finally, um, you know, out of these coordination calls, we've talked about, uh, you know, coming out with a summary of methodologies and, and recommendations. So just a, just a general uh, summary of, of, of some of the, some of the uh, reef assessment work that's uh, Kind of newer newer work that's coming that's that's started or coming online and uh, and the coordination that's going with it. So uh, with that, I'm happy to conclude and uh, and I guess take questions uh, live.